six different looks to shoot. Y'all, and they are over the top. <laughs> Probably the most extravagant pieces I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> I'm not allowed to wear MAC makeup because it irritates my skin and it has um, some animal products in it and they also test on animals so oh well. Wonderful today. How are you guys? <laughs> Welcome to the process of getting glammed up. <laughs> oh boy. Just in a couple of days, the new project drops. I hope you guys are enjoying the previews so far. You said you wanted some good R&B music, so before the turn up this summer, I'm gonna give you some good old mid-tempo 90s R&B music. Slow jams. <laughs> Love and light. For upcoming dates, um, you can visit the website mayamaya.com forward slash events. And yes, the physical album will be available to purchase on mayamaya.com inside the shop. And you can order the standard, autographed or personalized, and I'll get it to you myself. So yes, there will be physical CDs, but exclusively on my website for now. I hear that some of you guys want some vinyl, <laughs> so I'll do a limited edition of vinyl as well. This will mark the 20th anniversary of the debut album from 1998, and this will also be my 13th studio project. And ninth overall album and ninth independent Planet Nine project. So, just getting started. Hope you guys enjoy the vibes. All positive vibes on this project. All feel good music, high vibrations. But it's contemporary in sound, so it's going to be different than the Smoke Jones album, which was more traditional R&B. This one is more new sounding, with the layers of 90s R&B music on top with my vocals. So you get the best of both worlds, and I played it in my car the other day. <laughs> oh my gosh, it bangs. If you like 808s and bottom heavy stuff, but you're still going to get the chord changes on top and modulations and harmonies and 90s R&B runs. So you can put it on your voicemail. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they have some Latin music playing in the background. It's taking me away to a nice warm climate right now. Hopefully wherever you are, the weather's not bipolar like it has been lately. I know all around the world they have different seasons at different times, but if you are in the United States, then it's 
supposed to be spring. <laughs> but I just heard someone up north got uh, some snow. I know we got snow in Maryland not too long ago, and then it was like 85 degrees the next day. I don't know what that's about. Maybe climate change? I have no clue. Unless it's just uh, spring's attitude every year. I don't really recall any spring being like this so late in the game. It's almost May, you know? <laughs> hey, BET. What up? Um, if you guys have previewed the new project, do you have a favorite? And I also wanted to know if you do have a favorite, why? And then, which video you want to see next? The last one I gave you was Ready for Whatever. But if there's one that resonates with you the most and that you want to see first after ready for whatever, just let me know. Based on you previewing the album, not just the singles, but the album. Oh, my goodness. Atlanta? Um, what's the weather like there today? Oh, you got me. Tasha says you got me. Down, Steph Ortiz. Down, Tasha. Damage. Buddha Bear. Ready for whatever. Oh, the video for Ready for Whatever's out. Already. Congratulations, guys. Three million views and counting. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, tell Tony I said hi the question was if you're just tuning in which song you like the most from the previews of the album and which video do you want to see next I'm getting um, hair and makeup done. My makeup's done right now. But we're doing six looks today for a photo shoot for a magazine. And we have six looks to knock out. So the hair and makeup will change throughout. But right now we're starting simple with a, a smoky eye and a natural lip. <laughs> Mood ring was your favorite. And you like the new album. Are you talking about Smooth Jones or are you talking about TKO? Ready part three, Zico, okay, Zicomo. So we have two, three people for down. Ready part three, I see one. Ready for whatever video is already shot. Tasha, which one? You just chose four songs. <laughs> I can't tell you the publication of the magazine right now. TKO is an interlude, guys. So there's no video, you know, full music video for that, but it's an interlude. Short, too, so it's not a song yet. <laughs> um. When am I coming to Atlanta? Well, stay tuned on mayamaya.com forward slash events for the touring dates. There's quite a few up there right now, but more being added. D.gram says down. You want to see a video for that? Ready part three. Okay. So three for ready part three, four for down so far. One for damage. Yes, I'll be in New York, Kale, Simply Kale, on 4:27 to perform at BB King's. I think that's a Friday. I'm not 
sure. No, it's a Saturday. I don't know. Friday or Saturday. It's the weekend. <laughs> ABK Brooklyn. Friday, the new album comes. 420, the 20th anniversary of the debut album. Maya, you know what? At 12 a.m., really Thursday night, is when the album drops. East Coast Standard Time in the U.S. And that means... I think 9 p.m. on the West Coast is when it also drops, so it's really Thursday night, 419, going into 420, like the morning of, so really we only have two and a half days, <laughs> two and a half days to go if you're on the East Coast right now. Oh, yes, there will be a meet and greet at BB King's on 427. It's a really late show. It's like 1.30 in the morning I go on stage, something like that. And then after the show, I'll be doing a meet and greet. And hopefully I'll have some of the TKO CDs ready by then. I've been spending my whole week getting the graphic design and album design layout. Thank you. Thank you's credits. The back cover, the front cover, the inserts, the pictures, like together ready and ripe you know you guys said that you wanted some physical cds so i'm going to do a limited run and then i'm going to change um, the packaging up a little bit and then also print up some vinyl since you requested that too <laughs> but i hope to have it in new york with me meet and greet details are on the throwbackparty.com where you can actually get tickets and they're only going to allow probably 50 people maximum for the meet and greet after the show. So just letting you know ahead of time. You like simple things. Oh, thank you for the feedback. Okay, so question from Laker Nation 3224. Do you enjoy being independent than, well, rather than a major label? Yeah, in some ways, and no, in some ways. So I'll break down what being independent means for you. Being an independent label, and my label is called Planet Nine, which I formed in 2008 after the leak, accidental release of Liberation, which was my fourth project, which got shelved after the leak online everywhere. I formed my own label, Planet Nine, and started uh, producing my first album in Japan with a one territory release. So it was limited to that territory and it was called Sugar and Spice. It came out the same year in December of 2008. But being the label and the artist, you have to pay for 100% of everything. So you have to go on the road or generate funds from your songwriting, whatever you do to hustle, you know. Uh, to pay for the production. Luckily, in 2005, my brother built a studio in my house and I had already learned how to engineer. So, I cut out studio costs, engineer costs, but I had to get it mixed and mastered. And that is very expensive to get it right. So, I'm working on this very limited budget in 2008 with my own money. Usually, the record company, when you're with a major label, they give you an advance. And that advance, you know, allows you to, number one, live for however many years or year during your album cycle to create the album. But they also pay for all of the production, all of the flights, hotels, studio time, um, engineer fees, mixing, mastering, photo shoots, packaging, etc. With a, an independent label, you got to pay for all of that yourself. <laughs> If you're doing a show, it's not paid for your record label, so you're paying for flights, hotels, per diem, wardrobe, all of your crew, rehearsal space, rehearsal equipment, sometimes backline, sometimes lighting, sometimes the techs, you know, whatever it takes. 
and that's coming out of your pocket. So I had to learn how to be the business manager, the lawyer, draft my own contracts, cut that commission out. Sometimes I'm often my own agent, you know, and I talk to promoters directly or you know, instruct one of my team members that I trained to step into the position of being the lawyer with all of the contract templates that I've drafted throughout the years. And so I have like 50 different templates, number one for interviews, two booking forms, to gather all the data, uh, contracts for hostings, contracts for appearances, contracts for, you know, club performances, multi-city performances, tours, theater performances, like it's, it's different for every show. So collecting the data is very important. Yeah. Now, on the creative side, after the music is done, you got to negotiate the deals with the producers. Every producer is supposed to get paid, you know, and sometimes yeah. it's thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars per track, plus songwriting fees, if that is a part of your negotiations. You know, you have to keep track of those contracts, draft them, negotiate them. Also, okay. publishing split sheets. <laughs> okay, and publishing split sheets basically break down every single percentage of each person that contributed to one song, including all of their information, whether they are with a Writers Guild, a BMI, CSEC, ASCAP, etc. you know, so that you can enter it into the system and they can get paid their royalties or mechanicals from each stream or download or physical purchase of your album or single. So I do all of that myself. So it's crazy. You got to be a crazy person to do that. Yes. <laughs> nope. I'm good. Did you guys have an PTA on when you'll be ready, Michelle?